Glory to Christ, Son of Mary, born a child. You are one with us. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to Christ, Son of David, born to rule. You reign in our hearts. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to Christ, Son of Man, born to save. You are the light of the world. Glory to God in the highest. Lee's going to come and read our reading from Matthew 2. Will you please sit down? Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12, the visit of the Magi. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east, and we have come to worship him. Then King Herod heard this, and he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, He asked them, where is the Christ to be born? In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. You may ask why a Christingle service? Well, the Children's Society has been uh, putting on these Christingle services for many decades now. But the origins of the Christingle has its uh, place in church in Germany on Christmas Eve uh, in uh, 1740-something, about just over 270 years ago. And there was a person leading an informal service, and he gave each child a lighted candle tied with a red ribbon in memory of the Saviour's coming. Uh, And the red ribbon, of course, symbolizes the blood of Jesus Much later, the simple candle was replaced by this more elaborate Christingle, you can see on the picture on the screen, which is actually rich in symbolism. I'm just going to point out some things on the Christingle uh, for you to think about. The, of course, you know, it's obvious, you can see the orange there, uh, represents the world, not the same color as the world, of course, but it represents the world. And it reminds us... um, uh, of Jesus, of John's uh, writings about Jesus in John chapter 1 in the New Testament. Uh, it says that he was in the world, Jesus was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which is his own, but his own did not receive him. And really, this is about uh, the love of God for the world. But the red ribbon that is on every Christingle represents the blood of Jesus which uh, was shed for us that our sins may be forgiven. And John, again, tells us about this in one of his letters, 1 John uh, 1, verse 7. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son purifies us from all sin. Now the fruits, now most often they're sweets, and the sweets today on our Christingles reminds us uh, of God's gifts to us. And there's four of them um, on like cocktail sticks, reminds us of the four seasons. And uh, God says in Genesis uh, chapter 8, as long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never 
cease. So it's really a symbol of God's blessing to us. And the lighted candle, you know, the silver bit doesn't mean anything, it's just to catch the wax. But the lighted candle in the center of the orange represents Jesus, the light of the world. And Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Now we've had the reading from Matthew 2 about the visit of the wise men. How did these wise men know know that they were looking for a king? That's an important question. Uh, They came from somewhere in the east. It says that wise men came from the east. We're not told how many wise men. Uh, The assumption is that there were three of them because there are three gifts, but they could have been more, they could have been less. They came possibly from modern-day Iraq or Iran that uh, was called in the Old Testament Babylon. Now, at the time of Daniel, as described in the book of Daniel, many Jews lived there. They were taken there as prisoners, and so they lived there for their whole lives, some of them. Daniel lived there for 70 years. So the Babylonians learned a lot about uh, the God of the Bible from the Jewish scriptures. And it's complicated, but in the Old Testament, we're told that a great ruler would be born in Judea. So they were looking for this king, were these magi, these wise men that came from the east. And they were also people who were into what we might call the occult. They looked to the stars for guidance. So when they saw a strange star moving towards Israel or Judea, they thought, oh, we'll follow it. And so they did. Well, what was this star? A lot of people have questions about this because, you know, there are those who say, well, stars don't stop. And stars, uh, you know, if it was a a meteor, it wouldn't stop. If it was a star, the earth was rotating, so the star seemed to move, but it wouldn't stop because the earth would stop. Uh, that, That can't be, it can't be a star. Well, what was the star? We don't know. They just say this thing was a star. I think it could have been a formation of angels. You know, the angels who, uh, when they announced the uh, the birth of Jesus to the shepherds, it could be the same group of angels sent from God. And if you remember, people who have been in the presence of God, their faces shone. For example, Moses in the Old Testament, when he came down with the stone tablets with the Ten Commandments on, his face still glowed with the light of God's glory uh, when he returned to the people. So angels uh, can have this light that shines off them from the very glory of God. And in the book of Revelation, um, you know, uh, John saw Jesus' face. And he says in Revelation 1.16, it was like the sun shining in its strength. So we know that God, who is light, passes light onto other people and other beings. And the angels came and they probably glowed in the same way. Can you imagine this huge, great formation of angels in the sky appearing like a star that these wise men were following? And all, a whole army of them flying a formation would look like a moving star that could stop. The wise men may not have known it, but the three gifts have Meaning. Now, I've got three gifts here today. Uh, first of all, in this box here, we've got some gold. Now, we don't know what the gold that they brought looked like at all. Looks quite impressive, doesn't it? Though? <laughs> like a Christmas present. But, uh, you know, there you go. That, that's what we think of as gold, don't we? Like a gold ingot. Well, it might have been a vase or something made out of gold. Uh, There's some nice biscuits in here afterwards. I might give you one if you're good. Do you think so? Uh, Gold. Now, why would somebody bring gold to the baby Jesus? Well, in the ancient world, if somebody was going to visit a king, the only gift that was considered worthy often was some gold because it was the most precious metal. And, uh, you know, it was an obvious gift for the wise men to bring Um, So, you know, Jesus, they believed, was to be a king. In fact, they believed he was going to be the most significant king in history. And we know that to be true. He is the king of kings 
and Lord of Lords. Now, I'm going to move on because I'm going to talk about the other two gifts now. Frankincense. There we are, there's some frankincense. And uh, actually, I've got some in a bottle here. Uh, this uh, is called Three Kings Incense. Would you like to have a look? Frankincense in a bottle. It's quite expensive. Um, and I have actually got an incense burner at home, but I didn't want to choke you by burning it today because people are not used to incense. You know, it <laughs> makes you cough. So I've got an incense stick here. What people, you know, buy to, to make a nice smell in their homes. I'm going to light it with the candle here. This is made with the same stuff, really. And I don't know if you can see, but if I stand still, it gives off smoke that rises and goes up in the air. I'll leave it on top of the gold. It should be all right on top of the gold. It should sit there, burning away. If you start coughing, I'll, I'll move it. Um, Frankincense and the third gift, myrrh, uh, are very similar. And they're both... Let me just show you some myrrh. There you are, that's myrrh. They look very similar, don't they? Well, actually, they're both gum that comes from a tree. They cut the tree bark and the liquid flows out and it forms this solid gum. It's actually very expensive. But frankincense and myrrh both come from two different but very similar trees and frankincense is used in worship in the Old Testament and, uh, and actually it's mentioned in the New as well in Psalm 141 it says my, may my prayer be set before you like incense may the lifting up of my hands be like the evening sacrifice so you know in incense the smoke rises it's almost as if our prayers rise to God shall I move it before you start sneezing does uh, you know? Can you imagine? You know, there are some churches where where they burn that proper incense every week, and it's clouds of smoke. And I can remember going to a church once, and they sort of waved it in my face, and I nearly choked. But there you go. It, the smoke rising symbolizes our prayers rising to God. And um, Revelation, Revelation eight verse four, the smoke of the incense, together with the prayers of God's people went up before God from the angel's hand. How about that? Now, here we have the fourth, third gift. So, now, the, the mayor, have a, would you like to, if you open this and you're careful not to drop it, you can have a sniff, because it would have been the, the mayor with some spices. The reason, of course, they gave the frankincense to Jesus, they probably might not have known, but the smoke rising means that our relationship with God means that our prayers can be heard because Jesus breaks down the barrier between us and God so that our prayers can be heard. And actually, the third gift, myrrh, that's a very strange gift to give, a very, very strange gift to give to a baby, because this stuff was exactly the same sort of stuff that the women took to the tomb to embalm Jesus' body with on the day he died. So it's embalming spices, and they would have taken those things to when Jesus died. So really this gift, when Jesus is born, it looks forward to him being the way to make our prayers heard by God, in other words, breaking down the barrier of our sin, taking our sins away. And of course, the way he did that was dying on the cross. Uh, of course, the whole thing was brought to fulfillment by the resurrection, which we as Christians celebrate uh, in, on every Sunday and throughout our lives. But the three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, that's what they were for.